about that. Got a little bit of signal issues this morning. I can switch to my... It looks like it is on the Wi-Fi. Anyway, happy holidays. Let's get it done. So we're talking about foreign exchange settlement and clearing today. And I want to sort of explain the way that works. So obviously with any trade, you have to have two counterparties. Someone's trading with someone else, obviously, right? So if we say on this side, we have one counterparty. Again, that's an entity, individual, someone who wants to do a trade. This individual has something they want to get rid of or sell, or they have something they would like to acquire. It doesn't really matter which side they are on. The, the, the bottom line is they want to do a trade, right? If I'm going to give, then you're going to take. If I'm going to take, you're going to give, right? So it always has to be another person. Think about this like a normal transaction right if you're selling your shoes right you got to be a seller you have the shoes you want to get rid of and there needs to be someone who wants to acquire the shoes the buyer or if you're looking for some shoes you want to actually look for someone who has shoes to sell right so that's kind of party a and then we have kind of party b right so you can be the buyer or seller this can be the buyer or seller bottom line is they have to have an inverse relationship so bottom line is let's say this individual wants to buy a currency from this individual. Um, first of all, the whole process starts with streaming of prices. So this individual, let's say that this is the individual that actually is going to sort of make the market. We can refer to this person as a liquidity provider. So LP, they're providing liquidity. And then if in that case, in this scenario, if this is a bilateral relationship, we can say that this individual could be a taker of liquidity. So we can call this individual a taker. So what that means is this individual is providing liquidity. You're, so you are, are, are sort of creating a market. And by doing so, by basically streaming prices, by saying, you know, I will trade this currency at this particular rate or whatever it is, you're creating liquidity. This is what other individuals will see in terms of the market, right? So this taker is looking to acquire a certain currency. They can see the prices that are streamed to them from the liquidity provider. So this liquidity provider streams prices over. So those are the quotes, right? Taker over here sees a quote that they like. They can respond with an order. So the order goes back to the liquidity provider. Liquidity provider fulfills that order. So they send back an execution, right? So order, so that's a 35 equals D going over here. Then you have a 35 equals eight execution report going back, indicating the transaction. I have did this trade at this particular price, this quantity, whatever it is. So there it is. Trading is complete. Quotes or market data have been sent. So market data has been sent. Quotes have been sent to the taker. Taker sees the quotes on his screen, some kind of GUI, right? I like this. Boom, send out order. Order goes out, 35 equals D. 35 equals D goes out. That's your order. Order gets to liquidity provider. Liquidity provider accepts the order, sends back the fill. So that's the 35 equals eight. And then let's say this is a complete fill. So then we have a status of I know I wrote that backwards, but anyway, 39 equals two, complete fill. So the order is completely filled. Then, and uh, now we wanna talk about clearing. So there's different ways to do, do the clearing, but bottom line is you need to report what occurred. We need to make sure that, and again, it's a two-step process. You have to two-step, two-step process. Okay, sorry. Um, it's, uh, you have to, first of all, you have to clear the trade, so agree upon what occurred, right? I sold you this at this particular price at this time, whatever the standards are you're looking at, right? Do you agree? Right? And it's not a question and answer thing. It's a, you send the receipt. That's a nice way to remember it. It's called a trade report. 
but a trade report is basically like a receipt. Here's my receipt for what I know doing. This is the transactions that I did with this kind of party, right? You send me your receipts as well. This is what I know doing with that kind of party. So you both need to send out reports indicating what you know doing so we can make sure that everyone's on the same page, right? Because what if for some reason, system issue, whatever it is, you didn't receive a fill, you think that you did 100, right? In this case, we're talking for an exchange. So it could be dollars, euros, whatever it is, right? And for some reason, you're missing something, so you only know doing 50. So we know that there's a problem here and we can address it before we move to the settlement phase. That's the thing. Settlement is when we actually pay for things. That's when you actually move assets, right? We don't want to go to settlement without first agreeing upon what occurred. So that's the process, that's the purpose of your, your clearing process. So we see there's a 50, we can figure it out. Oh, I know what happened. Uh, uh, it should have actually been 100. Uh, let's settle this however we want, right? Or clear this up, right? So now we're in agreement. We figured out what the problem was. So now we're on the same page, 100, 100, right? And that's just if, if things didn't go right. Normally, you would clear properly. You would say, yeah, I know 100, I know 100. Boom, good to go. But again, the purpose is to identify where there are problems, where one party will disagree with the other. So that's a basic idea. Um, so once both parties have agreed on what actually occurred, then we want to send the reports. Well, actually, we already sent the reports. That was a, the whole clearing process. So we already sent the reports to a third party entity and they are going to match the trade. So let's just say, let's make, uh, let's see. So this is the third party. Every time never fails, never fails. All right. So, all right, so here is our third party entity that's actually going to do the clearing. So you know 100, I see your report for 100, 100 from counterparty LP, trade done against counterparty T, right? So I'm now looking for counterparty T to send me a report that agrees with what the liquidity provider said, right? So taker comes in with their report. This third party entity here looks at that report, 100 done against LP. LP says 100 done against T. These match, cleared, right? Now it's time to actually do the settlement. Now settlement, that's more, uh, um, getting a little bit outside of this realm because now you're talking about actually moving assets so if i am basically trading you let's say i have euros and i'm trading that for us dollars then once the clearing process goes that's when you actually move your assets so now we are cleared so now let's settle settlement is here are my euros mr taker here are my US dollars, Mr. Liquidity Provider, right? Essentially, that is basically what happens in the settlement process. Now, as far as fix goes, we talked about the standard trading, 35 equals D, execution report, status message, complete fill, mumbo jumbo, the stuff you love. Then let's talk about what happens here. So here, there's two different ways, standard ways that you can send these trade reports, or I like to call them receipts of your transactions. You can either send the typical execution report or, or an execution report type of message, literally a 35 equals eight message with the trade details. So this currency, this price, right? This side, you can send that information via 35 equals eight messages. Right. Or you can send a trade report message. So you can send a 35 equals AE. And there you go. Now, in these messages, once again, all you're indicating is 
the details of a transaction that has already occurred. You already did a trade. Now you're just reporting the, the details of that trade to a third party for clearing and settlement purposes, right? So you can use a standard execution report type of message, maybe some deviation in some of the tags, some custom tags, but generally speaking, it's just an execution report message. Or you can use a, a message actually dedicated for this purpose, specifically for this purpose, an execution report message. You can use that to send your trade details to the third party for your settlement and clearing. Now there's other things to talk about like things like repeating groups where we're talking about basically we refer to these as legs. So you could say the taker being a client leg and this is the other leg. However, you can actually do this as a single message. So it is possible that let's say these transactions actually occurred at some kind of ECN right so this trading occurred in ECN ECN sends the report to a third party for clearing and settlement purposes and they can send a single report using repeated groups and we'll talk about that repeating groups we'll talk about that in future videos but basically with that single message we can indicate what occurred between these two counterparties anyway that is pretty much how it works so um, any questions post it below and uh, happy holidays merry christmas to everyone and uh, there will be more videos to come